by the way, he's going out to the American League West in a huge pitcher-friendly ballpark in Seattle. I think he's only going to get better, to be honest with you. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. Saskatchewan Rough Riders defensive back Luchez Piravoy was involved in an incident at a local restaurant Sunday evening following his team's West semifinal win in the Canadian Football League. Luchez Piravoy, like you said, he's a massive part of that defense. They need to play this one safe because this is a situation where if there's going to be blowback if he plays, it might be better off to not play him. Nobody was charged, so I fully expect he'll play. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It absolutely is. Happy Wednesday, Canada. And you're looking live inside a very special place. And we'll tell you where that is in moments. It's Canada's daytime sports talk show. And I continue to broadcast from gorgeous South Florida here on episode number 624 of Canada's daytime sports talk show. If I had my cowbell, which I don't, I would be ringing breaking news on a couple of fronts. And we're going to get to that momentarily. But let's head to the other side of this beautiful continent and bring in the lovely, talented co-host and president and owner of DuPont Media, Darren DuPont, who is in those luscious environs on the West Coast. Good morning, Moose. Wakey, wakey. How is it out there <laughs> on the morning. West Coast? Good good morning. It is, it is gorgeous, actually. The rain's let up for a little bit, so it looks like the sun's going to maybe poke its head out here this afternoon. It's already 13 degrees. But yeah, it's a bit of an adjustment. I know it's noon where you are, but it's 9 a.m. here on the West Coast. So I got coffee and it's actually a morning show today. Yeah, so tell folks where you're at and what you're doing, if you don't mind, before I get to the nuts and bolts of what we're doing here today on Canada's Daytime Sports Talk Show. Yeah, so uh, we're here on the beautiful uh, Trinity Western University campus uh, in Langley, B.C. The Spartans have, have brought us out. Bearcroft, men's hockey coach, a big part of this connecting us with the university and out here for three days today, tomorrow and Friday. Uh, it's going to be awesome to be on campus. We're going to be able to take in some of their games and uh, throughout the course of these three days, you're going to see three different sets, but a whole bunch of great shots of their beautiful campus that I was walking around this morning. Looking forward to a glad to have you part of the show and particularly from out there coming up on the program today we'll be joined by our good friend the nhl network's Stu grimson to talk some national hockey league and also from that trinity western spartans program the men's volleyball coach ben josephson who's just been named the head coach of canada's men's volleyball team for the olympics that's coming up later on today so before we go any further would you mind please hitting the quick six show horn uh, director jordan please and thank you this is of course the warm-up brought to you by e cole electric Come see our sales staff and in-house specialists for all your electrical needs. There's actually a couple points here that are ahead of my quick six show topics. This all came down since I put them together this morning at Brooklyn Water Bagel here in South Florida. This is from Hockey Canada. Forwards Ridley Gregg and defenseman Owen Power and Caden Gooley headline Canada's 35-player selection camp roster for the 2022 World Junior Hockey Championship. Hockey Canada will choose its 25-player roster following their camp. December 9th to the 12th in Calgary. The tournament will be held. Uh, well, Canada opens the turning December 26th in Edmonton against the Czechs. Red Deer is the official co-host city. Uh, so where do we go? Canada will take three goalies to Edmonton to cap. So Brett Brochu of the London Knights, Dylan Guerin to the Kamloops Blazers, and Sebastian Cossa of the Edmonton Oil Kings will all represent Canada. Gooley of the Prince Albert Raiders was a member of last year's Team Canada, which lost 2-0 to the USA in the World Junior Final. Manitoba Moose Center Cole Perfetti, Mum Spaghetti, who was named to this year's selection camp roster, was also on that team. Owen Power from the University of Michigan has already won World's Men's Gold with Canada in June in Riga, Latvia. He was named to the selection camp roster last year, but the Wolverines didn't release him. Ridley Gregg, whom we all know quite well of the Brandon Wheat Kings, a first-round pick of the Ottawa Senators, has 12 goals, 11 assists, in 16 games this year for the Wheaties. And if I may, I think he's the best player 
in the league, not named Connor Bedard, which, uh, speaking of, the wonder kid, 16-year-old Connor Bedard and Kingston Frontenac forward Shane Wright were also named selection camp invites. Ottawa 67's head coach Dave Cameron will coach Team Canada. They will play a pre-tournament exhibition game December 19th against Switzerland, December 20th against Sweden, and December 22nd against Russia. So debate it will, Canada. This is the selection camp roster for what? In just over a week's time in Calgary, they're all going to get together. And all I want to talk about is Connor Bedard at 16 years of age being on the roster. That might be a great poll question, Moose. Should he be? Well, you know my answer. I thought he should have been on the team last year, especially when they needed some goal scoring in the gold medal final. So I'm all excited about this roster. How about you? I'm excited about it too. And we heard, you know, TSN talking about it last night that it doesn't look like any of the NHL players will come back. That includes Cole Sillinger. That includes Seth Jarvis. So it doesn't look like they'll be released, although there's time for that still to happen. They're not expecting any of those guys to come back. So this is, this is the roster. These are the guys who are going to go to camp and make up this group. So it, it is. It, it's, it's a good group, I think. Cole Perfetti is going to lead that way. Ridley Gregg should have a significant role. Caden Gooley. Um, and then the Connor Bedard, Shane Wright. Obviously, that, that's the youth movement. And the future, I, I think it's great. I really do. As you, There's the roster. I think it's awesome. I think Bedard getting an opportunity. I think it was going to happen to camp. Will he have a spot on this roster? I don't know if he'll be one of the 12 or 13 forwards. But he's got a really good shot to make it. And I think he deserves to at least be on this camp roster and, uh, and be there skating with Team Canada. There's the list. Thank you, Producer Clark, for putting it up. And we'll be debating that as the program goes along today. That's the breaking news today. Canada's World Junior Invite list announced, and it includes Connor Bedard and Shane Wright. Anyway, and another breaking news this morning. This one came from the Canadian Football League. One player from each CFL team has been nominated for the 2021 Jake Goddard Veterans Award, which annually recognizes a CFL player, a Canadian one, who demonstrates the attributes of Canada's veterans. Strength, perseverance, courage, comradeship, and contribution to Canadian communities. And they are from the BC Lions, David Mackey, from the Edmonton Elks, Matt O'Donnell, from the Calgary Stampeders, Rennie Paradis, from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, kicker Brett Lowther, from Winnipeg, Jake Thomas, from Hamilton, Chris Van Zyl, from the Argos, Chris, uh, Jamal Campbell, from the Ottawa Red Blacks, Nigel Romick, and from the Montreal Alouettes, Christophe Normand. So congratulations to all of them. It's kind of sad that they all can't win. This is you just I just read the criteria of the award. Obviously, I'm pulling for our guy Brett Lather, but they're all winners. They're all champions, and kudos for the work they've done in their communities and as human beings. So that's the breaking news from our leagues, Hockey Canada and the Canadian Football League today. Anyways, on to the quick six show topics, which I had here in the warm-up for E. Cole Electric. Do, do, do. Sam Reinhart scored the winning power play goal with 14.4 seconds to go, capping a furious comeback for the Florida Panthers to beat the Washington Capitals 5-4 Tuesday night. Trailing 4-1, the Panthers scored four goals on a season-high 26 shots in the third period alone to snap a two-game slide. The last time... A team pulled off a comeback like this. Ironically, was the Capitals, January 18th, 2020. They trailed the Islanders 4-1, entering the third, and went on to win by a score of 6-4. to four. So, Darren, all the way out there on the West Coast, and you were traveling all day, did the ramifications of this arena, 20-some miles down the road from where I'm right now, did you feel it shaking? Because it was shaking wow. last night in the third period when uh, Sam Reinhardt scored the winning goal. It was a game of the year in the National Hockey League. I'm so happy I was there. People were talking about it. You know, I, I heard people talking about it, and then it was all over Sports Center. So as I was watching in my hotel room, getting caught up on what I missed throughout the day, it was big. And, you know, that was a, it was a big step for the Florida Panthers, who are a good hockey team. They won the 11 in a row at home to tie the record to start the year. All those things are wonderful. But you have to overcome adversity and check off boxes throughout the year. This is one of them, being down to a good team, that's a playoff team that's likely a Stanley Cup contending team in Washington. And to be able to do what they did, that shows you that the Florida Panthers are real, that they can actually overcome some adversity. So now, you know, what other steps do they need to take to be ready to take a run in the spring? But yeah, this was a, this was a bit of a statement game for the Florida Panthers. 
Well, stay tuned because my NHL top five, bottom five are coming up. But elsewhere, Kevin Shattenkirk and Trevor Zegras scored in the shootout. And Anaheim blew a three-goal lead in the third period before rallying to beat the LA Kings 5-4 in the first freeway face-off of the season. Ryan O'Reilly scored the lone goal in a shootout. And goalie Jordan Bennington rebounded from a rough start to lift St. Louis over Tampa Bay 4-3. Rupe Hintz scored his first career hattie on an empty netter. And Dallas beat Carolina 4-1 for its fifth straight win. Mark Stahl's first goal of the season was the tiebreaker with just over eight minutes to go, leading Detroit over Boston 2-1. Jordan Greenway had a goal and two assists. Kirill Kaprizov and Kapo Kakinen made... Uh, oh, K Kaprizov scored and Kapo Kakinen made 29 saves as Minnesota beat Arizona 5-2. Sharks leading scorer Timo Meyer scored twice. James Reimer made 32 saves. And the Sharks... Defeated New Jersey 5-2. And lastly, in Music City, Philip Forsberg scored four goals. And Juicy Soros made 27 saves for his first shutout of the season. Nashville blank Columbus 6-0. That's what happened Tuesday night in the National Hockey League. And it all sets up. It all sets up. The top five, bottom five in the National Hockey League for this opening week of December. Are you ready to go, Moose? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's see it. Let's go. By virtue of the Panthers' comeback win last night, it was billed as the game that would determine NHL supremacy. Billed by me. And Florida won it. They came back and they beat the Washington Capitals 5-4. Therefore, the Florida Panthers and their 33 points, they're the number one team in the National Hockey League, the Florida Panthers, as we sit here today. And because Washington lost it by a goal, they're number two. Number three, the Calgary Flames. You say, the Flames? Yeah, you heard me. They are plus 29 in the goal differential. They're the number one team in the Western Conference. We can't forget about the West. The Calgary Flames are the number three team in the National Hockey League. Number four, the Toronto Maple Leafs. You can't ignore their 33 points, which has them tied atop the league overall with these Florida Panthers. And number five, the Minnesota Wild, a team that has won four in a row. We got to give the Central Division some love. So feel free to agree or disagree. But those are my top five of the National Hockey League. Let's flip the script now and go to the bottom five in the NHL. Number 28, the New York Islanders. I know it hurts. It hurts me to say it, but your record is what you are. Your stats are what you are. They're minus 20 in goal differential, and they continue to struggle even though they're finally back home. Number 29, the Ottawa Senators. I know they're ravaged by COVID. I know they're not playing, and that has limited their point total. But they were still bad. They were still last place in the... Atlantic Division going into this, and at minus 27, they're struggling to defend and they're struggling to score. Number 30, the Vancouver Canucks. I would have had them lower, but for their win over the Montreal Canadiens earlier on this week. Do they still have a coach and GM as of today, Vancouver? Number 31 is the Montreal Canadiens, who just can't get out of their own way. And even with the GM firing, they did they, they couldn't find the Gusco to beat the Vancouver Canucks the other night. And number 32 continues to be the woeful Arizona Coyotes. And I don't want to run them over on the highway any more than I have or kick them while they're down. They're the 32nd team in the NHL. There you go with the top five, bottom five. But Moose, if you've noticed, who's not in the bottom five are the Seattle Kraken, who last week yeah. beat the Florida Panthers, Washington Capitals, and Carolina Hurricanes. Break up the Seattle Kraken, man. They're a far better team than I thought. And having the opportunity to watch them live here in Sunrise only underscored that. But uh, your, your Leafs have made the top five, so you should be pretty happy with this list, I would think. I'm really happy with it. You know, I think that's good. I think you can't ignore that. You're right. The points are there. They've gotten things sorted out after a tough start. But the Kraken, man, Florida, Washington, and Carolina, what other team in the NHL is going to do that and knock off all three of those teams? I don't know who's going to be able to do it. So uh, that's a pretty impressive feat for an expansion group. And Seattle's earned their way out of the bottom five. So that's great. Congratulations. The warm-up is brought to you by E. Cole Electric. Come see our sales staff and in-house specialists for all your electrical needs. We've got NFL talk coming up, Vanier Cup, and new sports talk, of course. If you've just joined us and you're wondering where Moose is, he is at Trinity Western college in beautiful langley british columbia is going to be spending three days there and by the end of the week we're all going to know everything there is to know about spartan sports we have a new sponsor that we're welcoming today ding a ling a ling a ling tough tribe for men 
Tough Tribe for Men was designed to meet the unique demands of clean professional grooming. The warm scent of a gentleman's shampoo teams up with an invigorating cool peppermint conditioner. Top that off with a little beard and hair pomade to start your day feeling fresh and confident. Available today at toughtribeformen.com. That's with the number four. toughtribeformen.com and Amazon Canada. Tough Tribe for Men kickoff getaway starts today till Friday. Text Tough Tribe to our number, 902-518-3033. And you're entered to win a gift box of products valued at $150. It's that simple. We'll notify the winner on Friday. Tough Tribe for Men. Welcome to Canada's daytime sports talk show. Hey, Moose, I just said... CFL Division Finals, Vanier Cup, U Sports, NFL Notes. That's a lot of football coming up. We got two minutes left here in the warm up, yep. which is a very popular downloadable segment on iTunes, as I know, every day. Just your take on what's happening with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Luchez Purifoy situation. Uh, has it reverberated out there to the West? Because my phone's going off here today with members of teams that employed Luchez Purifoy before he ever showed up in Saskatchewan. Sounds like the story isn't going away. How do you expect this would affect the Rough Riders going into Sunday's West Final? It's a distraction for sure. And it'll be up to Craig um, Dickinson to determine, okay, how much are we going to let this affect what we do? You know, um, if Luch is around, if he's practicing, if he's going to play, if there's no internal discipline in terms of being on that roster or not, then, then you're taking your chance, right? You're taking your chance that, you know, the media is going to be there and they're going to be wanting to talk about that all week and it's going to be a distraction with your group. But if you can find a way, whether he's part of the group or not, if he's in there, to keep focused on football, that'll be the hardest task is, you know, trying to keep this out of everybody's minds and keep it steered at football. But, but it's hard because it is the big story. You know, people are wondering. We've seen it on our social media. And we've seen... And on three down social media, you know, people want to talk about it and they want to talk about, yeah. you know, is it an issue? They're bringing up past incidents. They're bringing up other teams and, you know, it's, it's become kind of toxic. So if you can keep this from being a distraction, great, but there's a threat that this could be a real big distraction as the team prepares for a pretty big football game. So we're kind of scratching the surface on uh, all of these topics. And when we come back, we will start into the Taco Time viewer takeover. Thoughts on Connor Bedard being named to Canada's World Junior Tryout Camp list uh, next week. More of this CFL talk. And, of course, this big contest, Tough Tribe for Men. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might hit your head. That could cause a traumatic brain injury that, depending on how severe it is, could take months to heal or leave you with long-term effects. Effects like getting debilitating headaches for the rest of your life. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with worksafesask.ca. I started the Chat Lacrosse Academy three years ago, um, and my main goal for the province of Saskatchewan was to spread the game and the awareness of lacrosse. Jeff Shatler here, number 77 with the Saskatchewan Rush. I currently play forward, 16 years pro. I live, work, and play in the province of Saskatchewan. Direct West mission is to grow Saskatchewan economy by helping small local businesses win with digital advertising services. But they are also a major supporter of local sport, art, and charitable organizations. Year after year, Direct West continues to put their money where their mouth is and ensuring the minor sports and art and music festivals can continue to thrive in our province. They continue to do all they can to promote our communities and assist nonprofit charitable organizations in the effort to improve the quality of life in the province of Saskatchewan. I'm proud to work with Direct West and call the province of Saskatchewan my home. 
Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop, staffed by PGA of Canada professionals, is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. All right, look at this guy. Look at that guy. I have no idea how he's operating the camera and sitting on the couch at the same time. Lewis, very talented. I know, right? It's when you got a crew, it's uh, it's pretty smooth. A lot of help around here. Is somebody monitoring the text line? Because it has just gone bonkers with Tough Tribe texts, as you can well imagine. Awesome. They want that 150 yeah, they want that $150 gift package from tough tribe for men one of our newest sponsors thank you tough tribe for jumping on board uh by the way to that text line you can always write us at 902-518-3033 jim vansha writes us from delisle and he says i made a pledge at the beginning of november if dupes kept his mustache for november i would donate to a charity which charity would he like me to send the 50 dollars signed jim vansha do you have a favorite charity moose Ooh, I I have a few. Um, off the top of my head, you know what? Just because you know people close to me were affected. Um, if you could, if you want to send your fifty dollar donation to a charity um, that helps deal with ALS, that'll be the one I pick today. So that would really help a lot. There you go. Thank you, Jim, for doing that, and thank you, Moose, for keeping the muzzy. Well, yeah. I see a lot of people are I see a lot of people are very upset about the Team Canada list for the World Juniors, the invite camp in Calgary. And I, for instance, Dan, the Jets fan, writing from Winnipeg, he says, "I'm surprised that only Carson Lampos was selected from the ice. The veteran forward Cole Perfetti will again make the team again. Go Canada, go!" From Jordan Ewart watching on YouTube, it's almost embarrassing. No Savoy, no Clark, no Othman. My cousin Christine in Medicine Hat watching says, have a little faith in those choosing our team. So uh, Jordan goes on to say, I'm Bedard's biggest fan. Bought season tickets just to see him play. But someone has to tell me how he makes this list over Savoy today. Well, I don't think we're going based off statistics, I don't think. Uh, Jennifer from the Four Seasons, Jen's watching. She says, good morning, everyone. Congrats to Connor for the invite to the juniors. So that is why we label it Canada's daytime sports talk show, because you knew that the World Junior camp invite list would get people hot and bothered. And 
Now you're following the dub pretty closely. Clark had some thoughts here on uh, no Savoys, nobody named Savoy being in, invited to the Team Canada list. Connor Bedard was in the under-18 camp in August, but not the under-20 camp. I've gone on record as saying I, I still believe Connor should have played last year at 15, and everybody thought that I was all wet, and that's fine. I'm used to it, but I'm, I don't have a problem with this list. But you knew, Darren, that somebody would. You knew somebody would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, when a, when a top player from your team doesn't get picked, that's an issue. And I, and I understand the Winnipeg thing because they're the best team in the country. So you want to have a little bit more representation, no doubt. But, you know, the roster top to bottom is going to be good for Canada. You know, we're going to have one of the coaches from that Team Canada group on our show this week. So we'll be able to ask him directly what went into these players, why certain people weren't left off, were left off the roster. So that will be really, really great to be able to have that type of coverage. But, um, yeah. We'll dissect this roster. Look at if they win gold, it'll be the best roster assembled. They made it the right choices. If they don't win gold, then we're going to look to all the mistakes that they made when choosing the roster. So we won't really know until the dust settles in early January. Pinks. Oh, when they hand out the medals, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, of course. Isn't that always the way? Um, Pinks writes in one of our P1s. Says it's literally the Bermuda Triangle today with Rod in the east, Darren in the west, and Regina at the top. What's it at the top of? Um, Eric Thomas watching on YouTube says, have a fun time here in Langley today, Darren. That's where Darren is, by the way, at the Thank campus you. of Trinity Western College, home of the Spartans. That's where one of Wally Buono's daughters went to school. I think Christy might yeah, have gone well, you have no played for the yeah, go ahead. You, couldn't, you wouldn't believe the messages that I'm getting from people all over the West Coast that are welcoming me to the West Coast and people who are said, you're out here. I hope to see you at this game. I hope to see you at that game. I hope to run into you here, there. People I've run into in Saskatchewan, all over the place. So um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to being here for the rest of the week. By the way, Stu Grimson coming up in hour one. Ben Josephson from Trinity Western coming up in hour two, named to Canada's men's volleyball squad for the Olympics as the head coach. So he's going to be leaving Trinity Western here before too, too long. Um, Dan, the Jets fan from Winnipeg writes in regarding the world junior roster. He says, Dave Cameron, the head coach, had a good analogy for picking the players. It's like a bag of golf clubs. You have some drivers and some putters. Yeah, and I'll take it one step further. You got some irons in there. You probably have a ball retriever in there. You probably have a head cover that's a furry animal-looking thing. Like, it's everything. And because hockey. of my years work, yeah, because of my years working in junior hockey, 17 years, everybody just assumes that you take the 20 best players in the country. And that's not the case. Everybody just assumes the NFL picks the best players out of the CFL and signs them in the offseason. That's not the case. They're looking for different kinds of players. And for years and years and years, Hockey Canada always had, which I'm sure you've heard this, Darren, a, what did they call it? A ghost depth chart or a ghost list, I believe is what they called it. Right. And they want this type of player to fit the third line left wing spot. And they want this type of player to fill the third defensive pair right D spot, this type of player. And they plug in all these holes. That's the way they were doing it 20 years ago. And I think that's the way they're still doing it. And Connor Bedard and Shane Wright go in terms of their name, like Connor Bedard struggling statistically, if he is struggling, that didn't matter to Hockey Canada. And we, 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 we knew right. this. We said this yeah. a few weeks ago. Hockey Canada can see how good the kid is. It's not about it's not about numbers. But there's my diatribe on how Hockey Canada is not going to take the 20 best players in the country. They just don't do that. Why do we get sucked into this every year at this time? Well, they have to come together as a team, and they need to all play a role. And you're right. You know, we need to have defensemen. I say we because we're Canadian. You know, we need to have two big defensemen who can log a ton of minutes. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be the most skilled player. It's going to be the hardest shooting player. 
but they need to log a ton of really tough defensive zone minutes. So you get two guys that can do that. But then you might need a really high-end skilled guy who can play on the power play and do these other things that those two guys who are going to log all your minutes maybe can't do. You need guys on a third or fourth line that can provide some energy. Maybe not the most finesse or we're going to put a bunch of pucks in that, but can bring you some energy. And guess what? From every coach, Barrett will tell you this, from Barrett to Mike Babcock to Todd Johnston around the Canada West in hockey, they all have different philosophies on what they want that roster to look like. So Dave Cameron has his idea of what he wants Team Canada to look like, and that's why he's assembling the players he's assembling. Just like you mentioned with the golf clubs, you know, some golfers want to have more wedges because they play the short game. Other guys just want to hit it far. So, you know, this is Dave Cameron's team, and he's got to choose the players to fit the team he wants to coach. Right. And the pressure. Ooh, doggy. Yeah. The pressure of coaching Canada's World Junior Team is immense. I'd like to talk to Dave Cameron about that. Yeah. By the way, I see they stamped my take on Canada's roster with a Bronco plumbing, heating, and cooling stamp. Call us today and book your duck cleaning at Bronco Plumbing and Heating. We have another, we, there you go. We have another new sponsor that we're talking about today. Can you hit a sound effect? Anything, Clark, like a Yahoo, let's Approved. go, whatever. Approved. Let's go. It is, it's Work Safe Saskatchewan. Not every slip, trip, or fall at work is going to leave you with a lasting injury, but it only takes one. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lasting impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafeSask.ca. Canada's daytime sports talk show continues. Stu Grimson coming up. Our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center is this. It's a simple one. It's low-hanging fruit. It is... Which is Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League? That's the question. Which is Canada's game of the week? You vote, you gorgeous viewers, on just two games. The East Division Final, Hamilton Tiger Cats at Toronto Argonauts, or the West Division Final, Saskatchewan Rough Riders at Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And last I looked, over 76% of you voting for the West Division Final. And maybe we should spend some time on that, Darren, and the time we have left. I saw the news conferences out of Winnipeg yesterday. Mike O'Shea, the head coach of uh, Winnipeg, talking about the fact that there's going to be 30,000 plus on hand at IG Field. He said, great for the CFL, great for this rivalry, great for the Bombers. Good old-fashioned grudge match type game here on Sunday, Riders and Bombers. And uh, we're working our ways to it. It's only Wednesday, man. I remember I these weeks. It seems like so far away, doesn't it, before they take to the field, the frozen tundra? It just does. It feels like, you know, Sunday, geez, it's, it's only geez, the week just started. I mean, we're already Wednesday, but um, you're right. They're full into their prep. It's going to be a wonderful weekend of football. And that game is going to be hopefully another chap chapter in this storied rivalry. Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, and they can continue to evolve now that they're meeting in meaningful games, playoff games. They're battling for supremacy in the West. They're battling for supremacy in the CFL. And based on all the, the conversation throughout the media across the country, which has been mostly about attendance and then the Luchez Purifoy stuff, we're talking about a, a passing of the torch, a changing of the guard in terms of flagship franchises in the Canadian Football League. Is it Winnipeg now? Can they officially lay their claim to being the CFL's flagship franchise? Another win over Saskatchewan and getting to another great cup will go another step further to putting their place and their mark on the Canadian Football League. So this is wild. This is really, really good. We uh, were talking with our friends at BetRegal.net yesterday. If you go to BetRegal.net and you can play the sports book for free. That's what I do. They already have odds up, not only for this weekend's games and point spreads, but combinations of all four remaining teams for the Grey Cup, you can go drop a bet right now. For instance, if it's Saskatchewan, Toronto in the Grey Cup, or Winnipeg, Toronto, yep. or what have you, they've really been putting their thinking caps on. And before we bring in the Grim Reaper, I want to ask you about the Vanier Cup, because I don't know about you, but my social media is slamming 
We'll talk about the Saskatchewan Huskies and the Western Mustangs coming up this weekend. And is Sportsnet's got it? I believe Sportsnet's got the broadcast on Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Man. I got to check. Man, people have come alive. Yeah. I'll check, and we'll, we'll get that confirmed. It, it might actually be CBC that has the rights to that game. But, I mean, they're, they're fired up. You know, this is East versus West. This is, you know, tough, two tough teams, two top teams in the country perennially. This is Greg Marshall. This is Scott Flory. This is Western. This is Saskatchewan. It's going to be great. Saskatchewan is big, prairie, tough. But Western, they have this aerial attack. They can run the football. They do a lot of things well. And they just put up points in bunches. Now, people will say they've played against weaker you know, uh, opposition in the OUA and going through the AUS in the playoffs was weaker. Saskatchewan plays in the toughest conference in university football, which is the Canada West. It is going to be great. Um, the Huskies have been slow starters. Typically, they've been more of a second half team. They'll need to have a better start. Can Adam Mackard have another big game? It's going to be so much fun as we get closer to Saturday. By the way, shame on me. Nelson Hakowicz, our VPSM events, has clarified CBC has the game 1 p.m. And I did discern that this morning, and I forgot. It's what happens, the hazard of having games on all these different networks. But it happens in America, too. CBC, 1 p.m., the Vanier Cup. I guess hear Mark Lee's voice echoing in my ears when I say that. Dupes, we'll see you back here an hour or two from Trinity Western. What do you say? Sounds good. Grim Reaper coming up. You're watching the RP Show, Canada's daytime sports talk show on the Game Plus television network across all 10 provinces and 31 states, including the beautiful state of Florida, where we're carried on TDS cable on the Game Plus channel. Live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. VetRegal.net, exclusive sports gaming partner of the CFL. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Don. Hey, Quinn. We have a surprise for you. Oh, my. <laughs> Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. 
Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. The RP Show broadcasting live on location. That is Kennedy Western College in Langley, British Columbia, where Darren Dupont joins us from today. I'm here in South Florida, where last night I was treated to the game of the year in the National Hockey League. The Florida Panthers coming back and beating the Washington Capitals 5-4. What a game at FLA Live Arena. And joining us to talk a little National Hockey League is our good friend Stu Grimson. 729 games in the NHL, Grimmer. I would run down all the teams, but it's only a two-hour show. How you doing, my man? I just ran out of time, Rod, my friend. I, I almost got to them all. I almost got to them all. It's a difficult, it's a challenging thing when everybody wants you. Like, the word is out. Everybody <laughs> wants you. Oh, of course, man. Flames, Blackhawks, Mighty Ducks, Red Wings, Whalers, Hurricanes, Kings and Preds. By the way, Grimmer, just on a topical nature, Canada's World Junior invite list was announced this morning. Uh, I don't know how many players, close to 30 players invited. And, and all of a sudden, the, the country's outraged for the players that were picked, not picked. Do you miss that living in Nashville, by the way, that insatiable drama around the World Juniors that happens in Canada every year? Yeah, I, I really do. It's, uh, you know, it's one of the most interesting tournaments the competition is always really fierce. And just the ability to get a, uh, a glimpse of these, these young prospects who are, you know, obviously at the amateur level have already established that they are elite status. Um, but it's just such a great opportunity to get a glimpse of these guys and see them on, on the world stage. Uh, at, at a moment, you know, just before they kind of break into the NHL ranks and see, uh, you know, you're always evaluating the question, uh, how, how does it transfer? Does it transfer to the pro level? So so get, getting to see them on the world stage like that is, is always a real kick. I've really enjoyed that tournament for that reason. It's given us some great, great hockey over the years. Oh, for sure. And USA is the reigning champions, and that's where games like Cole Caulfield and Trevor Zekers became household names with what they did last year uh, in Edmonton. Grimmer, because you're in Nashville, I want to ask you about the Predators. Third place in the Central. I thought when Peck Arena announced his retirement that they would take up, and that has not happened. Um, let's just talk about the Preds. Are they outperforming what you thought, or are they right where you thought they'd be? You know, the, the question for me has always been, uh, and I think, you, let me back up a step. UC Saros has, has really, to me, answered the question, you know, can he hold down the number one job and turn in really solid, really serviceable minutes consistently? He's answered that question in the affirmative. I think, you know, you're, you're, you've witnessed the successful transition from Rene to Saros. And I really do think you've got a, a guy who's really got his game buttoned down. So that has been a key question for me. Uh, looking beyond that, uh, Rod, the the ability for guys like Johansson and Shane to kind of take uh, the the you know the, the the game by the reins and and get back to a level that they've established at earlier points in their career, I, I think you're seeing that you know. Probably still a small sample size, but those guys appear to be really engaged. And two, a number of other, you know, unlikely, uh, you know, contributions have come from the likes of, uh, say, a Granlund, uh, a Tolvanen, a Jakob Trenin, for example. Colton Sissons provides important minutes from a lower spot on the roster. So, you know, they have been a, a pleasant surprise. I, I, this, to me, would have been a team that I didn't pick to make the playoffs. Uh, prior to the season starting. Having said that, 
they are, yes, they're nicely positioned. Uh, but you know, the, the things that I find really precarious, and I don't know when we've seen this in the past, but despite the fact that the Preds appear to have a, a spot buttoned down, remember, Colorado is underperforming to this point. I think Winnipeg is capable of central, sorry, of better hockey. And these are two teams lurking beneath the Preds in the central division standing. Of Vegas, if it becomes a race for a wild card spot, I really believe Vegas, once they get completely healthy, once they integrate um, uh, uh, Jack Eichel back into the mix, I think, you know, Vegas is going to be a club that's obviously competing for a top eight spot in the West as well. So, you know, uh, cautiously optimistic about the Preds, but again, they've, they've got to keep up probably a 600 hockey uh, uh clip or better to kind of button down a spot this year, just the way things are shaking out so far. Interesting. You say that Grimmer about the golden Knights last I looked, I don't think they're in the top four in the Pacific, but I'm with you. I think they'll get it figured out. And can you imagine once Jack Eichel shows up, but I had Colorado number one in the central followed by Winnipeg and Colorado yeah. has woefully underperformed. You're right. But you know, I just want to off the board with one. How about just the parody in the National Hockey League? Seattle's first win was in Nashville's building. That was their first franchise win. Mm -hmm. And the Kraken went through it last week. They beat Florida, Washington, and Carolina in a week straight. The Seattle Kraken with their four Saskatchewan yeah. players. Bravo. How do you feel yeah. about parody on a given night? It's like you never really know who's going to win in the NHL, and that's what you want. You know yeah, it's exactly what you want. And and I'll tell you, like, I get a great sense that, um, you know, I, I do about 80 days a year for the NHL Network. We produce it out of Secaucus, New Jersey. Part of the show, um, we we dedicate to our shootout picks. <laughs> I absolutely hate it, Rod, because it makes me look like I don't know a thing about the game. But we pick, you know, winners uh, for each uh, each game and the slate of games coming in the night. And honestly, like if you can, if you can serve, if you can kind of tread water at five fifty, uh, you know, I don't know that there's been a year in the recent past when I've been 600 winning percentage or better, uh, picking these games night after night. But honestly, you could pick a slate of games and take the winners across the board and still be under 500 on, on any night. That's just how difficult it is to predict a winner in the NHL today. And it's great. It's fabulous. Without question, you'll love to be part of a league where anybody can beat anybody, including, you know, some, uh, an upstart like, uh, I shouldn't say upstart, an expansion franchise like the Kraken. Are they, you know, are we seeing them play to a form where they're going to take down one of the top eight spots in the West? The Pacific has been far, far stronger than anybody, any of the pundits gave it credit for this year. So I think it's a tough road to hope if you're Seattle. But uh, again, I, I think they're playing closer to form now than we saw through the first, say, dozen games of the season. Absolutely. And uh, talk to Jordan Eberle after they were through here in Sunrise on the weekend. He's loving Seattle. He just said, we need more wins. But yeah. they're getting them. They went into Buffalo and won the other night. Grimmer, some fun stuff, by the way. And I should mention, in Canada, we don't get the NHL network. It's one of life's biggest mysteries. But down here in South Florida, I'm watching you in the press, in the media room before all the Panthers games. They've got it there, and it's amazing. But with the brawl the other night with LeBron James and Isaiah Stewart, the Lakers and the Pacers, I don't know if you saw, how could you not have seen the highlights on that living in the America? The way Isaiah Stewart went off, it reminded me of you in that video that I saw that night in Esteban with you and Reed Simpson. Remember, just when they thought they got him calmed down, he would rip himself away from the officials and go off again. Man, Grimmer, more people need to see that video of you. Do you know the one that I'm talking about, or did you do that more often than but it's too hard to pin down one specific incident? No, I, it, it was one of the, I'm not going to say I, there weren't a lot of times I lost my, you know, the wires touched and I lost my cool uh, playing at just about every level, amateur, pro, you know, the, the whole gamut. But, you know, I, I honestly, I was reminded of that very thing when I saw Stewart and LeBron going at it. Um, it takes me back to a time when, and, and people, you know, folks don't, fully appreciate this, whether it's basketball or football, certainly hockey, you know, as athletes, to be your best, you need to be right there on the edge. The adrenaline needs to be charging, you know, especially in a contact sport like 
like hockey, like the NHL. Um, and, and, you know, the regrettable thing is from time to time, no matter who you are, or way you play, you can cross the line and do something that's kind of out of character. That's what I saw Stewart doing, but it took me back to that. I think it's, uh, it's labeled as Grimson goes crazy on YouTube and it's probably got a million views by now, but that's exactly what was happening back all the, you know, all those years ago, that goes back to the early nineties in the old Chicago stadium. Back then, it didn't involve me directly. I was coming to the aid of uh, a couple other players on my Blackhawks squad back then. But yeah, it, it it takes me back to those days. It was uh, it was kind of hysterical that night. Great minds think alike. Uh, while I was watching that highlight the other night. I'm like, that reminds me of Grimmer and that tape that I saw in Chicago <laughs> Stadium. Anyways, <laughs> hey, always a good time. Wish we had more time. But Grimmer, thanks for the update. Let's do it again soon. Happy holidays. My pleasure. Happy holidays to you, my friend. Always good to be with you. Thank you, buddy. The great Stu Grimson checking in from Music City. Taco Time viewer takeover is next on a sports update, too. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus TV network, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might sprain your wrist, or even fracture it. A severe wrist fracture can take at least two months to heal properly, and it can cause you to develop arthritis that keeps you from doing something as simple as picking up your child without pain. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with worksafesask.ca. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center. Recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. Hey, Don. Hey, Quinn. We have a surprise for you. Oh my. <laughs>
Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Western College in Langley, B.C. is one half of where the show's originating from today. Originating from, the Moose will be joining us from there when we crack the lid on hour two. It is Taco Time viewer takeover, but I do want to mention some uh, sports items in the form of a sports bag. Running back Adam Mackert and defensive lineman Wiley Pickett are the Canada West Football Players of the Week after leading the Saskatchewan Huskies to a win in the UTEC Bowl on Saturday. Huskies knocked off the Montreal Carabae 14-10 in the national semifinal in Montreal to book their tickets to the Vanier Cup against the Western Mustangs in Quebec City on Saturday. CBC has the game nationally this Saturday afternoon. LA Kings forward Brendan Lemieux has been suspended for five games after biting Ottawa's Brady Kachuk on the weekend. The bite happened late in the third period of the Kings 4-2 win at Staples Center. And the Raptors continue to struggle in Tirana. Jaron Jackson Jr. scored 25 points to lead the Memphis Grizzlies to the uh, to a 98-91 win over the Raps Tuesday night. Spicy P had 20 points for the Raptors, who are now two and eight at home. The sports update for Ballers Rec Room. Check out our brand new line of games. Book your group Christmas party now. Ballers Rec Room, and for the Tab Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store, and for Red Bull Canada. Red Bull gives you wings. Last minute of play. Last minute of play in hour one. Taco time viewer takeover. I got to be honest. We're now midway through the week. It's hump day. And I don't think any of us have seen a viewer comment that has knocked our socks off. Nope. People got to pick it up. If you want to be in contention for the $50 gift card to Taco Time, which we'll be awarding on Friday. Ray, writing us from Scarborough, Ontario, on the 902 text line regarding those World Junior uh, camp invites. He says, I have no problem with the World Junior roster. There are a lot to pick from in Canada. We are fortunate. You'll never please everyone. Canada will be fine. Go, Canada, go. We'll talk about all these things coming up in hour two when the Moose rejoins us from Langley right after this break on Game Park. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we as people strive for. It means that the places we live and work and that the people we care most about are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. I started the Shot Lacrosse Academy three years ago, um, and my main goal for the province of Saskatchewan was to spread the game and the awareness of lacrosse. Jeff Shatler here, number 77 with the Saskatchewan Rush. I currently play forward, 16 years pro. I live, work, and play in the province of Saskatchewan. Direct West's mission is to grow Saskatchewan economy by helping small local businesses win with digital advertising services. But they are also a major supporter of local sport, art, and charitable organizations. Year after year, Direct West continues to put their money where their mouth is and ensuring the minor sports and art and music festivals can continue to thrive in our province. They continue to do all they can to promote our communities and assist nonprofit charitable organizations in the effort to improve the quality of life in the province of Saskatchewan. I'm proud to work with Direct West and call the province of Saskatchewan my home. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. 
Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Saskatchewan Rough Riders defensive back Luchez Piravoy was involved in an incident at a local restaurant Sunday evening following his team's West semifinal win in the Canadian Football League. Luchez Piravoy, like you said, he's a massive part of that defense. They need to play this one safe because this is a situation where if there's going to be blowback if he plays, it might be better off to not play him. Nobody was charged, so I fully expect he'll play. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It sure is, and you're looking inside the campus of beautiful Trinity Western College in Langley, BC, home of the Spartans. That's where Darren Moose DuPont is hanging his hat for the next three days, and he joins us as we crack the lid here on Hour 2, proudly presented by Great Western Original 16 Beer. And uh, Moose, we've got a lot to get into today here in Hour 2, a lot to tuck into. I think if you were watching you know, the end of hour one, I said, there has not been a comment from a viewer that's really tickled my fancy. There really hasn't been a comment that's floated my boat so far through two days and an hour of the RP show in Taco Time Viewer Takeover, which, by the way, Canadians love local. Go loco, eat local. Taco Time uses fresh ingredients sourced in Canada. Our beef, chicken, cheddar uh, cheese, sour cream, and Mexi fries all sourced and made in Canada. Look, I peeked into the text line in the break, and there people have some thoughts on the CFL betting lines, the point spreads for this weekend. But before we go any further, can you tell our viewers what they need to know about Trinity Western College, what you've learned in the 12 hours since you've been there? Well, number one, they want to make sure we get it right. It's Trinity Western University. They like to use ah. the TR, the TWU, How about right? That? Um, right. There's some great shots in here. I, what I've learned is it's absolutely gorgeous out here, by the way. It is lush. We did a nice tour of the campus. It's not huge, but it's very beautiful. And, you know, they have some nationally ranked programs out here. It's a wonderful athletic uh, university in U Sports now, the, the men's hockey program, which we know Barrett uh, runs that program, you know, just onto the U Sports scene. But they had success, the other program. And now in the university, but they're really big. And you're going to see this hour in the volleyball scene. They've always had a nationally ranked volleyball program. One of the best in the country. Some of the best volleyball players in the world come here and play. So um, that's been really cool. And just getting my feet wet, uh, literally, because the rain is finally letting up here in, in, in Langley. But, uh, no, it's been a wonderful start. Everybody's been really uh, rolling out the red carpet. I don't know if you saw on the social media, there was a beautiful gift basket waiting for me in my hotel room last night. So. It's, it's off to a great start. I saw that. Well, by the way, my apologies to Trinity Western University. It's, an ha it's a hazard of my age, Darren, because um, it used to be a college. I know they understand. It's like where I went to school was a college, and now it's a university. And now Trinity Western is part of Canada West. 
which reminds me of something. I had, uh, you, you wouldn't know this, but I had our last session with our interns this morning. And I'm really sad to see them go, Olivia and Andrew. And uh, Olivia said at the end of our Zoom call, she said, Rod, Rod, where did you learn to talk like that with your voice and the way you talk? I said, diction class at Mount Royal College, which is now a university. And I won't get into it, but I'm like, that's going to take us several more hours. We're just finishing up your internship here. Now you want to learn how to talk? I know. Mm. Don't, just, don't, don't just wave a wand. Hey. Rise and fall and enunciation, right? Uh, you learn that in broadcast college. You don't just pick up a mic and all of a sudden you're good to go. You learn how to stick handle at a young age, right? That's the stick handling of broadcasting. You should. So as I see from some of our viewers here, uh, from B. Henderson wants to know if Chris Strebler uh, ever ended up signing with anybody. And the viewers came to our... Uh, not to our defense, but they jumped in and said, yeah, Chris Strebler has signed with the Baltimore Ravens. They really want to talk about taco time. The general in Calgary has showed up. It's taken him a couple of days to absorb the Stampeders loss in the Western semifinal. But he says, I will say taco time does make the best tater tots. They say they're not tater tots. That's the thing. They, they say they're not. Uh, the by the way, Hooters does, a, Hooters does a pretty good tater tot platter too haven't been there for a while but i might have to go check that out um but to get serious here man they want to talk about luches purifoy and i i i literally just don't and because it's the rod peterson show i guess we get to talk about what i want to talk about while that rough riders defensive mvp got in the skirmish at the south regina restaurant the other night after the game it sounds like a very Serious situation, which has not come to a conclusion yet. So for that reason, I'm out, as they say on Shark Tank. Ron Thompson, Texas, he's watching from Calgary, and he writes us on the 902 line. 902-518-3033. Says Winnipeg now 8.5 point favorites over the Riders. He says the Rider dressing room will be pumped. And I think he's right. I mean, when you think about it, when you and I were playing sports, Darren, we were never betting lines on our games, but you knew there were people yeah. that counted you out, right? Betting against you, as they yeah. say. Uh, I, I, initially, I thought, nah, the riders won't pay attention to the betting line, but that's not true. Because I've spent a lot of years working on the same team with Craig Dickinson, and there were a lot of times we'd be standing on the field at warm-up, maybe the day before the game, the day before through walkthrough, and you know Dickie, he'd have his hands on his hips and just lean back and go, what's the line? And I'd go, oh, Eskimos by seven. Oh, all right. At that time, he was the assistant coach, special teams coordinator, as you know, but they always want to know, Darren. They always want to know. So 8.5 point favorites. Ah, will, it, will, it, will it matter? the motivation this may serve the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? At the end of the day, probably not. You know, did the line go up because of the, the news with Purifoy? Maybe. But the line went up because more people were betting on Winnipeg. That's why the line would raise. So if all the money's coming in on Winnipeg, that's going to force the line to go up, which is going to then hopefully trigger some money to come in on the Riders. How much do we have to move this line up before people start thinking that the Riders are an appealing bet? right? It's getting there. Eight and a half in a playoff game is an enormous number. It's an enormous number for a spread in a playoff game. This isn't college football, you know, where I was an 11-point underdog against Michigan in the Big Ten Championship. This is professional football. Um, it's huge. So this should trigger people to come in at Bet Regal on the riders. And that's where I would put my money as a, as a better. I'd put my money on the riders right now. Um, 8.5 point underdogs. I'm not saying they're going to win this football game, but they're, I, I, I just see it being a lot closer than a nine point game. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, Tacona Pauly watching on YouTube says, Why is the RP show not in Winnipeg for the Western final? Because the RP show is in South Florida. That's where Rod wants to be. Tacona Pauly. 
I'll do the talking, you do the watching. Input not invited. Bingo! From you. Now, now in, fair, in fairness, I yeah. was going to attempt to be in Winnipeg for this weekend, but my dance card was full. So, right. here we are. You got invited to Toronto for the East Final. You couldn't make that. That's right. And I had to be at the game of the year in the National Hockey League last night, the Florida Panthers, Washington Capitals. We can't be everywhere. You got to get us booked. Darren Workman. Darren Workman watching in Salt Lake City, Utah. I don't know how this came up, but it's one of my favorite topics. He says, a flagship franchise. To be a flagship franchise, you need players to want to play for you even for less money. CFL franchises need to have continuity. One-year contracts hinder this. I have no idea how that came up, but I love the topic. And let me just come back on that for a second. Ken Gill is watching in Seattle, and he says, will it motivate the Bombers because the line is only 8.5? Let's think about that. Just a thought. Playoff teams on the bye usually come out flat early in the game. Uh, from Chris Jarl, and where is he? I think he's in BC. Can I give the Taco Time gift card to Travis Green to split with his coaching staff? They're going to need it. I still don't That's understand good. how they still have a job. From Nelson Hakowicz, he says, momentum has definitely moved the line lower than it should be. We have seen all season the Bombers have been 10-plus all season. Take Sask to cover. I have them at 6.5. So, yeah, they're talking about betting lines for this football game Sunday, and I, and I love it. Get into Bet Regal, man. Get into BetRegal.net right now, and if you, even if you don't want to put up money. Listen, because I'm cheap. I'm very cheap, so I don't like to fritter money away on gambling. This has nothing to do with me being in recovery from addiction of substances. It's betting was never my thing. I'm too cheap. I'd rather spend $3 on a cup of Starbucks coffee than on a prop bet. Who's going to have more passing yards, you know? So <clears throat> anyways, back to this. I'm sorry I got off track. God, there's so many good comments coming in from everybody, and I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. Tell your friends, by the way, about the RP show, and come on down to Winnipeg. Come on down to YouTube. I think with this flagship franchise thing, I know that people don't want to hear it in Saskatchewan. I've said it many times, but you're going to see if what I hear is correct and what I read is correct, there's going to be 30,000 plus in IG Field come Sunday. I don't know what the forecast is going to be, but that is the marquee franchise in the CFL right now. I'm sorry. The, the executives are talking about it. The riders don't want to give up that mantra, but what are we talking about here? They're the defending Great Cup champions. Um, I believe their merchandise sales are number one. I believe that's a fact. Free agents are flocking there. That's what Winnipeg has made them the flan franchise, flagship franchise of the Canadian Football League. And by the way, Darren, because people still want to talk about the attendance issue in the CFL, and you were saved for a day of not talking about it yesterday. Lucky you. I know. Do you not think if they approach a sellout on Sunday in the West Final, it's not going to blow to smithereens the excuse that, oh, people aren't going to CFL games because of the vaccination passport. They're not going because they're forced to get a shot to go. They're not going for this reason, that reason. Really, why are they going to Winnipeg? Because all the same rules apply there. They're I saying 30,000 plus now. I wonder if, they're gonna, if, I wonder if it's going to get to a sellout. Well, that's what I, I've heard from people in Winnipeg that's saying they're, they were pushing 30,000 a couple of days ago for tickets. They're over 30 so that's now. Awesome. Yeah. They have to be. And it doesn't mean that you're going to have that many show up, but you should. They'll be close. I mean, it, there wasn't 24,000 in Mosaic, even though that was the announced attendance. But that's beside the point. Now, it may be a COVID thing. People are up, out here talking about the attendance. They want my take on it, you know, around the campus here and around BC and there. You know, is it, well, it's got to be the COVID thing, whatever. And that's the low-hanging fruit when it comes to an explanation. That's the easy one. That's the low-hanging fruit. And it may very well be the case, but it might not be. It might not be. Now, we saw a million people watch the game. Well, it tells you that the CFL is still very, very popular. We know it is. It's a good league. We knew that. The game is, the game is good, even though the scoring's been down and 
The entertainment value has been down. Three down football is still incredibly exciting. It's our game. It's a lot of fun. Um, but that tells me that you're having trouble converting your fans into bums and seats, whether that's a lack of presence in the market, you know, engaging the fan base like usual. I know when we roll through Regina, there's not a lot of presence of the riders on a game day. There's no flags in buildings yeah. anymore. There's no, you know, jerseys up and down the streets on a game day. It, you could drive through town and not know the games are on. Now, with COVID, that's a you're fact. Not out marketing Jack. Right. You're not out, but you're not out during COVID doing events and putting people out there and going around town and shaking hands like you normally would. So you maybe get a little bit of a pass, but if this continues into next season in different markets and the season after it will be a concern, but in Winnipeg, despite external forces, they're still accomplishing things and putting butts in the seats. So bravo Winnipeg. If they pack that joint come Sunday, it blows every one of these arguments out of the water. That's all that I'm saying. And while you were on that wonderful monologue there, I went and checked up the, uh, the forecast. And by the way, Darren's monologue for toughtribeformen.com. It was designed to meet the unique demands of clean professional grooming. I just checked the forecast for winter peg, winter peg Sunday. Minus four Celsius in snow. Very CFL-ish for this time of year. Mm -hmm. Not terrible. How many Ryder fans are going to travel to the Manitoba capital? Is there a push on that? Are we hearing that? Come on, Ryder Nation. We need you on the road. I haven't seen that. But I'm sure there will be a lot of Ryder fans there. Minus four and snowy is not overly palatable. And I thought, well, while I'm going to look that up, I might as well just go one step further and go check the forecast for Hamilton. By the way, did you know there's a Hamilton, Ohio? <clears throat> there is, eh? I did not know. Yeah, that. just found that out. I was today years old when I found out there's a Hamilton, Ohio. But for Hamilton, Ontario, for Grey Cup Sunday, while it's a little far in advance, it's 11, 12 days away-ish, uh, it looks like it'll be just above zero for the Grey Cup in Hamilton. And for December, <laughs> I got to think the CFL's on their knees thanking the football weather gods for that one. I know. When do you think? Because when, when you heard That's December Grey Cup in Hamilton, we were all thinking, dope. Looks like it's going to be D's. Hang on, Moose. We'll be right back, okay? Trinity Western University is where the Moose is. I'm in South Florida. We'll be right back. Let's uh, get her rolling with more Taco Time viewer takeover when we return. And on the way, Ben Josephson, men's volleyball coach at Trinity West Western. He will also coach Canada at the Beijing Olympics. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus Television, live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might hit your head. That could cause a traumatic brain injury that, depending on how severe it is, could take months to heal or leave you with long-term effects. Effects like getting debilitating headaches for the rest of your life. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorksafeSask.ca. this look familiar your fans deserve an incredible arena experience it's time for an upgrade stunning graphics revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology let us help you find the best solution for your facility bdg always delivering the best fan experience People donate blood for moments like this. 
But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. In the heat of the summer, heat of the summer, the moon is sound. It's a sound feel in the air. It's the best thing anywhere. Just give me, 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 give
Well, and in those big leagues, you know, you talk about, you know, Elias Pettersson out here and, you know, McDavid and Barkov. They still have to get on the community, too. You have to be seen by people. The difference yeah. is with those people, with those guys, they're seen by the fan base every day on social, on TV, in the newspaper, and all these different areas. And in the CFL, it's not the same. So that's why you have to get out in front of people. Now, in places like Regina, you would drive around and you'd see watermelons and rider flags and stuff everywhere you went around town. So it was always top of mind. You'd see rider players on billboards because they you know spent the money and did the work and then you would go to school and you know paul mccallum would be speaking in your gymnasium and you know all these different things would be happening well those things aren't there anymore so we're not hit with it every day and now our attention is you know taken up by the nfl and by the nhl and by you know this thing and that thing and it's really hard you have to find a way to be in front of people on a daily basis and you know Winnipeg's doing a good job of that. Winning does help. Winning helps a lot. I think when you think about the Saskatchewan mentality of, you know, us being the little kid in the country and kind of us against everybody else, and that kind of brings us together, I think taking a backseat to Winnipeg for a little bit might be something that galvanizes the province and makes us support the team and everything again. But you have to get back to work for sure. Poll question today, by the way, for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center is, which is Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League? We do it every week, this poll, usually Tuesdays, but coming up with it on Wednesday this week, and it is, uh, your options are, of course, the East Division Final, Hamilton at Toronto, West Division Final, Sask at Winnipeg, and 78% on Twitter saying it is the West Division final, Saskatchewan at Winnipeg, Canada's Game of the Week. I think the viewership will be large for both. And by the way, there was so much ballyhoo made, Moose, about the million-plus people that watched the West final. Did you see a stat on uh, the West semifinal? Did you see a stat on how many watched the Eastern semifinal? Because I haven't. I'm sure if I looked it up or sent a text to Dunk, he'd know. But no, I didn't see a stat on that either. And, uh, you know, beyond that, I meant this morning when I was sitting at Brooklyn Water Bagel to look up that article from Damian Cox in whatever newspaper he's writing for now. I think it's the Toronto Star that he said that this could be the last Argos game ever come Sunday. And the only reason I would read it, because I think it's all a bunch of fake news, is just to see what everybody's talking about. Because it was brought up again to me today. Somebody tweeted it at me. Is this going to be the last Argo game ever? I'm like, what? what? Why, am I, why do I keep hearing this? Oh, Damian Cox wrote it. Why? What would be the impetus for writing an article like that? I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, are they thinking that the Argos are close to folding? Now, we're not sure what the real financial state of these teams that are in the Canadian football league. We don't know when you haven't had fans show up, when you haven't been able to do certain things, you've managed to get this league, you know, on the field during a pandemic. We don't know what type of support they've had. We know they've been able to access wage subsidies and a couple of little things here that have helped, but we don't really know the ramifications. Do we look at a league that has to fold a couple of teams just because of financial restraints? I don't know. That stuff's going to come out in the offseason, and maybe that's a little bit of Damien's speculation, but I have no idea. I haven't read the article. Yeah, well, I got to read it, and I just a million things came up this morning. By the way, a sports update. The Toronto Blue Jays finalized their five-year, $110 million contract with right-hander Kevin Gosman. The 30-year-old will be counted on to provide star power to the Blue Jays' starting five, with American League Cy Young Award winner Robbie Ray leaving for Seattle in free agency. Meanwhile, Robbie Ray and the Mariners have finalized their $115 million five-year contract, coming off the best season of his career with the Toronto Blue Jays, 2.84 ERA and 13 wins. An exciting matchup is on tonight's NHL schedule as the Toronto Maple Leafs get set to host the Colorado Avalanche. The Leafs have won nine of the last 10 and have allowed the second fewest goals per game in the NHL. The Avs have scored at least five in five of the last eight and are expected to get star forward Nathan McKinnon back from a lower body injury. The Oilers look for their fifth win in six games when they host the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight. Oilers star Leon Dreisaitl enters the game with a league-leading 40 points. Also tonight, the Sens host the Vancouver Canucks in the toilet bowl. 
NFL. The New York Giants gave an indication of their concern about starting quarterback Daniel Jones by signing quarterback Jake Fromm from off the Buffalo Bills practice squad. The Giants announced the move before today's practice. The Associated Press reported yesterday that Jones has a neck injury and his status for Sunday's game against the Dolphins here was uncertain. The sports update for our friends at dubnetwork.ca and for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars. Now might be a good time to look at tonight's featured game, Moose. In the National Hockey mm-hmm. League, there are six. I pointed out a few of them there. The Raptors are off. It's Wednesday, meaning there's no National Football League. Yeah, and the Canucks are on the road, so you're not going to that game at Rogers no, Arena. What is your, uh, what's your feature game? <laughs> oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Bless Holy you. smokes. I just pulled up the score app, and you know what's wild? I'm going to relate to all the people on the West Coast here for a second because this is crazy. I'm not used to this. Looking at the app, all these games start at 4.30, 4.30, 4 o'clock. Yeah. Like, this is like late afternoon stuff. So my, my feature game will be Leafs and Avs. 4.30, puck drop out here on the West Coast. That'll be nice and early. You'd love it. So Leafs and Avs, that'll be a oh. heavyweight matchup in the NHL tonight. Um, hold that thought. Our viewers rallying to our cause. Ryan H. on YouTube plus Nelson watching saying that 684,000 viewers tuned in for the Eastern semifinal, Montreal at Hamilton. That ain't bad. That's good. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says Calgary is where the standard was set regarding being a flagship franchise. He said at minimum, Winnipeg has to develop their own quarterback before they are the flagship franchise. Uh, No. No, Jeff, you're wrong. Flagship franchise doesn't necessarily have to relate to on on field success either. It's very little to do with football. <laughs> yeah. At least that's our that's clearly our definition, our standard of it. But developing right. your own court, what? Why? That makes absolutely no sense to me at all. I mean, I kind of get where he's coming from. The New England Patriots drafted and groomed Tom Brady and won six Super Bowls with him. I get it. The Dallas Cowboys drafted and groomed Troy Aikman and won three Super Bowls with him. I get it. But I but the CFL is different. Yeah. They're not drafting any of their quarterbacks. That's right. Now, I get where Jeff's coming from. I don't want to completely poo-poo his suggestion. And but the fact of the matter is Calgary started it. No, they not only did they not start it, they've never been it. Yeah. Where, where do you ever remember Spicy. anybody saying the Calgary, the Calgary Stampeders are the flagship franchise of the CFL? Not since I've been on this planet, let's put it that way. For years and years and years, when I was following the CFL as a fan and then working in it for a generation, it was the Edmonton Eskimos. And then the Saskatchewan Rough Riders stole the flag from them and planted it. Mm-hmm. And I continue to say the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have stolen that flag from Saskatchewan and planted it, but people don't want to acknowledge it, but it's a fact. Yeah, not since it's got that nothing happened. nothing to do with football. Right, not since that, uh, since Saskatchewan took it from Edmonton have we had another changing of the guard. Now, Calgary's had a long dynasty as being a dominant franchise, maybe the best football team in the CFL. Before that, it was the Montreal Alouettes that had the dynasty for being maybe the best football team in the Canadian Football League. I mean, the Riders had their stretch in, in the early 2000s as well, in the mid or late 2000s. But, yeah, it's a different argument. The Greek Freak is watching on YouTube. G. Yanitsos, he writes in, and he says, so are you saying that Bombers' top management is better than Riders' top management? How about that? How about that? I'm saying whatever you think I'm saying. <laughs> which reminds me, by the way, in the time that we have left here, which is a few minutes before we bring in Ben Josephson from Trinity Western University men's volleyball program. And I meant to put this in my quick six show topics and I didn't, but this could be a topic any day. Let's just say we are going to award for the first time ever the Taco Time CFL General Manager of the Year Award. And if we can all agree that Kyle Walters won it the last time we handed it out, the virtual award of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in 2019. 
who's winning the Taco Time CFL GM of the Year Award in 2021. And you got to vote Pinball. on it before the Grey Cups play. Bo! Pinball. What? <laughs> Pinball. I didn't even think he was eligible. <laughs> Why not? Look at what he did. He made all those offseason moves now. Because he's what? Mm -hmm. He's not Look doing the, the work from what I hear. Yeah, from oh, what I hear. Okay. So what? So they're going to hand it to Murph. Murph. Give it yeah, to Murph. Yeah, he's going to turn around and give it to Pinner. Well, Pinner's name will go on it, but it'll be in Murph's trophy case, okay? So that's how it'll work, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I could just see it. They've earned it. They hired the coach. They Now, they brought in all these players, and we were looking at their receiver grouping like, look at these names, NFL names, Martavis Bryant, Kendall Wright, Bishop Sankey at the running back spot. They had all these guys, and none of them panned. None of them came. They never ended up even making it to the Toronto Argonauts, but they put together a group. They made moves at quarterback and then decided they still wanted to go with Macbeth, and that worked out. They've tinkered enough to come up with a championship caliber team, and they're going to have a shot, one of four teams left, to win a Grey Cup. Dude, you didn't even have to think about it. I can see it now. I can see it now. Pinball strodes onto the stage. Here's your Taco Time GM of the Year Award. It's shaped like a taco, oddly enough. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. here you go, Murph. Goes right down, hands it to him in the front row. I could just see it. LFG. Yeah. Before we break, before we break from Earl James watching on YouTube, newsflash, CFL's been around for 100 years. Calgary is not a flag nor a ship. Approved. Uh, Earl, Earl Jones goes on to say, <coughs> Harry Jones, <coughs> uh, this is GM of the year. Okay, not coach of the year. And Jeff, and Jeff, the Stamps fan, is trying to divert attention by asking Ryder fans if Purifoy will play Sunday because we just dummied him. Hey, K Moose, we'll see you back here for overtime, okay? All right, thank you. Special guest Ben Josephson from Trinity Western University joins us after this break. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube Live, and 24-Hour Sports Radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy.
addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic, evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba, on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center. Recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Broadcasting from Trinity Western University. That's where our next guest will join us from. This is Canada's daytime sports talk show. And dare I say the CFL's favorite daytime sports talk show too. The viewers are awake and alive in advance of this weekend's division finals. I just want to mention a couple comments here. Craig Campbell watching in the GTA. He says Argos tailgate 9-ish a.m. start on Sunday prior to the win over the Kitty Cats. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, could the large attendance on Sunday be expected in Winnipeg be the novelty factor of them not hosting a Western final since the Nixon administration? Has it been that long? We'll have to talk about that coming up in overtime because we're here to talk Spartans athletics, and we're pleased to be joined by the men's volleyball coach, Mr. Ben Josephson, who joins us from the facility out there. Ben, uh, welcome to the RP show. How you doing, sir? Fantastic. It's not raining today, so we're good. Uh, yeah, no kidding. I heard that it's a gorgeous day out there, 12, 13 degrees. Before we go any further and talk about your program, I understand that this has been a very exciting time for you because you're going to be coaching at the Olympics men's volleyball. When did that uh, decision come down and that announcement, and what's it done for your life? Yeah, I mean, yesterday was the first day they officially released the press uh, rele information publicly. So it's been a bit overwhelming the last couple of days with all the outpour of support and people excited about Volleyball Canada and Team Canada. Uh, I've kind of been in discussions with Canada probably the last two weeks. You know, I actually got the call when I, me and my family and I were in Disneyland. So uh, I got the call from from uh, our high performance director offering me a position and the happiest place on earth just got a little happier. and. Uh, it's a dream come true. It's kind of ever since I got into coaching, the idea of coaching Canada, like that's the top of the heap. Nothing's bigger than coaching your country and try to go to the Olympic Games and win the first medal for Canada. Congratulations on that and your smile ear to ear. It kind of uh, tells, you, tells us how you feel. Yeah. And that is the yeah. Paris Summer Olympics. So uh, congratulations on that, Ben. Now, it didn't hurt, obviously, that your program is number one in the country, U Sports, men's volleyball at Trinity Western. Tell me about this team and the year that you've had. Yeah, I mean, I think we all are strategizing how to make the best of coming out of COVID. And uh, one of our theories was we have this incredibly talented team that hasn't played volleyball matches in you know over a year. So um, when COVID cut the championship in 2020 short, I think we were the number one team there and we thought we had a good shot to win it. And last year, again, we thought we had a good shot to win it, but COVID shut that season down. So we got a bunch of really hungry athletes waiting to uh, get after it. So we were uh, trying to figure out how do we pack as many matches into this season, into the semester as we could. And uh, we got an opportunity to represent Canada at the Pan Am Cup in Dominican Republic. Um, all the Canadian teams were, uh, were unavailable to, to go. And as the defending champs still from 2019, uh, we got the invite. And so we got these seven high level matches against, uh, all the Pan American national teams. And then we got to move into our, our exhibition phase and we had a bunch of great matches there. And then we, uh, had this two week gap in our schedule and, uh, the American NCAA teams all invited us down to come play. So we got to play teams like, uh, USC and UCLA, Long Beach State. Pepperdine, so some of the powerhouses down there. 
so we got another seven or eight matches there and uh it's been a really heavy semester for match play but um we just have this incredibly talented uh, group of athletes so every every game we're getting a little better and man this this is one of the the more fun exciting teams that uh, that i've had in my career well congratulations so far on uh on winning this championship for U Sports. Can you please give me a smattering, a snapshot of where your players are from? Is it all Canadian, Western Canadian, some American, Pacific Northwest, what? What's the cross section of your team? Yeah. yeah, so all of our athletes, except for two, are Canadian athletes. We have one American from uh, just south of the border. He actually trained in Canada through his high school club years. And then we have a German player who just joined us as a freshman this year. The rest are all from Canada and they're all over the place. We got a couple of Sask boys and we got a bunch of Calgary kids and uh, about half the rosters from BC. Um, we don't have any current Ontario. Oh, we have one Ontario guy. We got another one coming in next year. So um, being at Trinity Western is a pretty unique place, you know, being a faith-based institution and uh, very specific in, in some of our programs, we get to target our recruiting base across the country and, and those who kind of love it, love it a lot. And we use this mantra of our kind of guys. So we're going to find you know, the best players we can, but they're going to be our kind of guys. And when you find those two things, then uh, we do our best to get them here. And once they're here, they, they usually blossom and to be pretty cool guys and pretty great players. And uh, that's kind of the group we have is we found the best players we could find that fit our style and our way from all over the country. And yeah, the, the mix, you mix them all in a pot and see if it tastes good. And so far it's, uh, it's been, been pretty good. Well, please, Ben, forgive my ignorance. The connection here, if anybody needs to know is Barrett Croft is a longtime friend of mine, your men's hockey coach who will join us on Friday. And I know how excited he was to make the move up from the athletic conference. You as a school were in to now Canada West for men's hockey. And they just got their first win last weekend, as you would well know, was the exact yep. same thing true for men's volleyball. Did you move up from a conference? Can you explain how all that went? And if that is the case, how significant it must be to be number one in the country. Yeah, so when I was actually a player, so we're not even going to talk about how long ago that was, is when we made the move. <laughs> uh, after my freshman year as a player, we made the uh, move from the uh, CCAA ranks up to the U Sports ranks, then the CIU. And uh, so that was in 99, I believe. So now I just aged myself. But um, so for the last 20 years, we've been competing at this level. So uh, we won our first championship okay. in 2006. And then uh, I took over shortly after that um, for my coach, Rob Pike. And then uh, my first championship was 2011. And uh, so we've won five in my career so far. Um, you know, with two, COVID cost us at least one, maybe two. But uh, I know there's some teams out there that would argue that. But point is, uh, you know, we, we've been able to really build over the last 20 years into being a, a really great, great volleyball program with a lot of level of, of success. And, and again, we believe that Barrett and his group is uh, – starting that journey too but for us it was a 20-year journey to kind of be where we are today and um yeah we're, we're really pleased with the product that's out there but um again trinity western just affords you so many uh i guess easier roads in some of the how easy it is to find really great people because those are the types of athletes who like to be here and i mean good people make good spartans and uh, that's it makes my life a lot more fun i got three little kids at home and there's not a lot of reason to leave home that i'm excited about but coaching uh, my volleyball team is one of those reasons it's fun to leave my kids you're the alabama crimson tide of men's volleyball that's what you're telling me so i'll say congratulations and i and i know what it's like for recruiting for nick saban guys are dying to play for that program so your success must just really help on the recruiting trail yeah we it's one of the best parts of college sport you know pro sports built for parity you know with the draft picks and the salary caps and it's good business to have everybody kind of all competitive where college sport is not that way it's the you know in college football college basketball you name it it's the same five six teams that are there like look at the college football playoffs right now i mean <clears throat> those same teams are there almost every year so it, you know it's kind of like that in volleyball in canada too there's you know five six programs who are perennially great and then there's always some programs that are trying to build into it and we used to be one of those programs and i was a part of the lean years as a player and those were tough but uh you're right i mean it, if you can get your first selection as in recruiting then uh if you have the right talent then volleyball is actually not that hard to coach but finding the right people the filtering out the, the people who fit your system or the character that you value that, that's probably the, the art of it Bump set spikes, not that difficult. Um, and which leads kind of to the new challenge in Canada is you don't get to recruit. In Canada, we have the players we have. And we got to find the 12 to 14 best players we got. And we have to try to make a really great volleyball team in three years to go 
play, you know, the top nations in the world. So uh, I'm excited for the difference, but it's very much, uh, we get to first pick in, in college and we've, uh, we've had some really great athletes come through here. Wonderful interview. And obviously Trinity Western will be sorry to lose you, but I know very happy for you because you've earned this. So Ben, thanks for the chat, my man. And uh, good luck Absolutely. in Paris. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Ben Josephson, the men's volleyball coach at Trinity Western University. The Moose jumps back in for overtime after this break. You are watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube Live, and 24-Hour Sports Radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might sprain your wrist, or even fracture it. A severe wrist fracture can take at least two months to heal properly, and it can cause you to develop arthritis that keeps you from doing something as simple as picking up your child without pain. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafeSask.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Yeah, the studio today self quoted for me, Trinity Western University for the Moose. I want to mention a couple of things. It is Taco Time viewer takeover. Taco Time's signature hot sauce is made in-house daily. I don't doubt it for a minute. 
And Moose, as you saw on my story, my Instagram story, my personal account at Rod Peterson Official last night at the Panthers game, pregame meal for the media, ground beef in the tacos. No way. And you saw Storm and Norman, Storm and Norman, the guy that was handing out the food. I'm like, Norman, you guys get it. Ground beef in the tacos, yeah. man. They learned it from taco time. That's what he told me. Uh, by the way, introducing a few new sponsors, uh, partners of the day today, WorkSafe Saskatchewan. Not every slip, trip, or fall at work is going to leave you with a lasting injury, but it only takes one. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafe sask.ca hour two of the program as always is brought to you by great western original 16 beers they're found across western canada and if you're lucky there might be even be one in your fridge and for tough tribe for men which will be you'll be hearing a lot about tough tribe for men we were running a contest today 150 dollars gift packet to whomever text into our text line 902-518-3033 just write tough tribe and you'll be automatically entered. I think we're giving away one a day, aren't we, Moose? Or is it just one? We got a few. Um, you know, we'll clarify oh. that. But we, we're going to have a few for a little bit here, um, especially leading up to Christmas. So, And there is a gift package. It, it arrived on my desk early this week before I left. There is uh, going to be a package on its way down to you, too. I love it. I love it. All these new partnerships, we welcome them. But I think the most important thing here that we need to remember is that the Florida Panthers food production staff gets it Spicy. and it's ground beef and the tacos just like taco time storm and norman he's one of us all right we did the top five nhl bottom five nhl earlier on in hour one yeah it's time for everybody's favorite especially for the nfl fan viewers right now that is darren moose dupont's Top five NFL teams. These Miami Dolphins just down the road have won four in a row. I'm just on the edge of my seat. Are the Dolphins made your top five in the NFL moves? <laughs> what do you got? Not yet. Not yet. They're not there yet. Uh, Arizona is still number one until they prove that they're not. Look at they're winning games convincingly with Colt McCoy as their quarterback. When Kyler Murray comes back, they're going to mow everybody down. Now, Green Bay has done the same thing. And that's why they're like 1A or 1B, you know, Green Bay. They've done the same thing. They've had really key injuries. Like, skilled guys, four of their top players have been out with injury, and they continue to win. New England has become the best team in the AFC. They've got the longest active winning streak right now. Their defense is good. Their offensive line is really good. They don't take penalties. They don't turn the ball over. They control time of possession. And Mac Jones is a rookie. We're looking like the best quarterback out of that draft right now. Now he's in the best system with good coaching. So they check a lot of boxes. Kansas City has figured stuff out. And the most important spot for them is they figured it out on defense. And that was the concern. So they're up to number four. And the Bucks righted the wrong, or they've, they've steered the ship in the right direction, at least for one week, when they've moved up to number five and look for them to continue to climb up this list. So we're starting to see the teams separate here in the NFL. By the way, uh, yeah. Your Patriots at number three. I get it. Well, not your Patriots, but the Patriots. Jen down at the Four Seasons writes in. She says, I remember this. I remember the 16 and 0 Patriots walking in and thinking they had it in the bag. And all they walked out with was a participation ribbon. Anything can happen on any given Sunday. That's right. Riders shocked the bombers. She, remember that Super Bowl? I don't remember where I was watching, but I remember Belichick left the field without shaking hands. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget it. Um, so the Greek Freak, by the way, at the Four Seasons, they always sponsor and bring you overtime every day. The Greek Freak wants you to know, dare to dream Super Sunday at the Palace. The Riders upset the Bombers in the West Final, 3 p.m. Big screen, big sound. Then later, the Leafs whoop the Jets. He's not endearing himself to our Winnipeg viewers, but I have a sense he doesn't care. He says, you know where the CFL is on the big screen and all the NFL Sunday and NHL action is. It's up week, baby. That is from the Greek freak down at the Four well, Seasons. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. What do you got? What do you got? Well, great on that because that's the Leafs and Jets on Sunday in Winnipeg, right? I believe it's in Winnipeg. And there's supposed to be a Western final going on in the CFL. So if the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are pushing 30,000, 
and you've got this real marquee NHL matchup happening on the same day, even more impressive. Yeah, it's a big town. It's uh, it's a tough guy town, Winnipeg. Uh, I'm going back and I'm reflecting. If if Clark is paying attention now, and I'm sure you are, Clark, what was the comment? I feel like we had a comment here that came in that stands alone is the clubhouse leader for the Taco Time comment of the week. But at the moment, I can't remember who it is or what it was. It was last minute of play, last minute of play in the RP show. It was Earl James. And what was he talking about? I see he, it's on the screen now. Newsflash, CFL has been around for 100 years. Calgary is not a flag or a ship. Well, it's not endearing him to the Calgary viewers, but I get it. And I, to, you know, again, to Jeff the Stamps fan, who is a one of the P1s here, whether he likes it or not, he's a priority one viewer. He just got a little mixed up on what we felt was the criteria for the flagship team. Anyways, we'll yeah. do it all over again tomorrow. Moose, you enjoy uh, Vancouver, all right? Great job out there today. I will. Thank you. Enjoy the sun. Thanks to Stu Grimson and Ben Josephson uh, for joining us today. Most of all, you, the viewers, folks, without you, there would be no us. We'll see you tomorrow at noon Eastern right here on Game Plus TV. Truth's in the coffee. It's truth serum. How about that? Bob's your uncle. Right on. I like it. Approved. Oh no. Let's go.